Graphs in A-level chemistry can be a little intimidating, but the concentration versus time or volume versus time graphs are nothing to be afraid of relating to rate of reaction chemistry. So what are we looking at here? Well, we have a reaction of excess magnesium with sulfuric acid to make a salt and some hydrogen gas. The hydrogen gas is being collected in a continuous monitoring style practical, and a graph has been plotted of volume of hydrogen gas collected versus time. I've deliberately left the axis labels off here because they are not my focus, and please note that the sulfuric acid is the limiting reagent, because we're going to come back to that later. What can we do with this graph to begin with then? Well, a common request in the exam is to work out the rate of reaction. Rate of reaction is represented here by the gradient of the line, and since this line is actually a curve, the rate of reaction must be varying over time. More on that part later. We find the rate of reaction by drawing a tangent to the curve at a specific time and using a whopping great big triangle to calculate the gradient. This is a familiar and consistent process using change in y divided by change in x, final minus initial each time on the axis to get the correct sign on our answer. In mark schemes, your gradient usually has to fall within a specific boundary, so get some practice with those. You may have noticed me describe the triangle we are using here as being as big as possible. That advice comes from the OCRA examiner comment summary sheets that I'll link in the video description. So what happens when I start to change some of the conditions of my reaction? Well, the purple line you can see here could represent a selection of changes to these practical conditions. For example, it could be that the temperature has increased. Or perhaps we have halved the volume of H2SO4, but doubled its concentration. Maybe even something was done to increase the surface area of the solid reactant. It isn't obvious which changes have caused this, but one thing is for certain. They would all increase the rate of this reaction and cause the line to have a steeper gradient. They would also cause the line to plateau sooner and the same final volume of hydrogen gas to be formed as the total moles of sulfuric acid used, the limiting reagent, don't forget, did not change. What about observations, though, if we were doing this in a lab? We would notice the reaction mixture have more vigorous bubbling and some of the solid would disappear faster. Remember there that not all the solid in this reaction is going to disappear, though, and that's because the magnesium is in excess, so some of it is bound to remain at the end. So where on the graph is it indicated that the reaction is finished? It's the plateau I mentioned before. Over the course of the reaction, the concentration of the acid will decrease, and this causes for less frequent collisions, and the rate of reaction decreases. The vocab here is really important in the OCRA exams. Picture the scenario then. What would happen if we just randomly doubled the volume of the acid we were using? How would the curve change? Well, check out the pink line we've got on here. Because in scenarios like this one, watch out for that final volume of hydrogen gas being collected. Since we're now using double the moles of the sulfuric acid, which remember was the limiting reagent, you can expect to produce double the hydrogen gas volume at the very end. So watch out when it's not just something like concentration changing, but the moles are changing as well. Thank you very much for watching. I'd like to recommend you follow up this with some look at other Module 3 topics on the OCR specification, which are linked on screen now. Don't forget to never underestimate periodicity when you're revising and pay close attention to the details in this next video to help you out with that. Until next time though, happy revising.